So for cropland monitoring, we use similar procedures as we do with the rangeland monitoring that we're looking at diversity of, of uh, plant species uh, to some degree, but mostly the insect species. So here we have a, an alfalfa field, uh, probably about a foot tall at this point. Um, and we're going to go in and look, take a close look at things here. So when we push back the, the crop of alfalfa, we're going to compare this later to a, a, uh, a rye field as a crop. But we're going to come in here and look and see we've got a ladybug in there. Uh, that we can see. But what we're noticing here is a fair amount of bare ground. We've got some ants. And so to use the ring circle, it's hard to do with a tall crop like this. But we will do the, the tape measure. Um, so if I'm looking at this circle here and expanding it out, we end up seeing that we have uh, some residue here. But we do have more bare ground between the plants. We do have uh, cotton, uh, wood, um, tree leaves, and some residue from the old crop uh, on here for some good residue, but uh, in terms of insect diversity on the soil surface, the predominant species is ant, and a little bit, we have the one ladybug and uh, some uh, little green mite type uh, type insects. So now here we're doing the tape measure. It can have a 25, a 50 foot, doesn't really matter. You're multiplying by the different um, uh, amounts that you have. So here we're gonna we're gonna do uh, just five samples for right now, but you'd want to do a minimum of 25 samples with a 25 foot tape measure. So I've got to attach to a rebar at one end, always reading on one side of the tape measure, not alternating. And what I'm looking at is, is there uh, uh, a residue that's at least a tenth of an inch wide at that one foot mark? So uh, here we do have a residue, but it's just to the side of it, and right below it is not a substantial piece of residue. So this would be uh, no residue. So covering of the ground is not sufficient at this point to count. So now we come down to the two foot mark here, and it can be difficult with a, um, you know, when it's during the growing season at this stage, but again, if we look straight down, there is a leaf. So that counts as covered. So we have one of two spots now that are covered. And again, we come down to the three foot mark here and there is no cover, so one of three. So now we're going to the four foot mark and there is a leaf cover, so we're two of four. And it's probably hard to see in this because uh, of the shadow of the um, uh, cover here of the of the uh, alfalfa, but there is a residue on the five. So just with this short sample, we have three of five. So five goes into 120 times, three times 20, uh, because we have three hits of residue times 20, which is the factor if we were going into 100. Uh, so if we did 100 points, then based on what we've just seen in these five feet, it would be 60% uh, covered soil. Um, and we would want to track that the following year to see if our management practices could move it up to more cover. And we're going to check that against a rye field next in terms of the cover that it has. So now we can see we've got a, we've dug up from this area, we've got some earthworm, uh, activity here that we can see and we're going to what we're going to do now is the uh, the soil structure test so we're going to take a little bit of of a piece of soil 
Got about the right size right there. About the size, a little bit bigger than a period. And we're gonna stick it in the water there and we'll see if it can hold together for a minute so we're timing it. So now we've let it sit for a minute and it's still in there uh, holding together but we're going to try the sw gentle swirling to see if it holds together. If it holds together for a minute without swirling that's a one. If it can uh, hold together and there are some pieces that are holding together even during the swirling small particles uh, then that's a two. Okay, here we are at a rye field. Uh, this is a flood irrigated in, uh, in Albuquerque. So it's uh, end of May. We've got, uh, so it's pretty hot, getting towards 80 degrees. Um, so we're going to look at uh, a little quickly here, a little bit on the, again, at the circle technique here. We've got the circle laid down. You can see that there's a lot of growth in between these big rye plants here. Um, and what we're seeing here besides the ants is uh, little grasshoppers. We've got some spider activity as well. So, uh, but we don't see any ladybugs. So if we're counting diversity of species as we're moving through here, we have ants and grasshoppers and spiders. So we now have three uh, species of, of insects um, that we see here. Um, this ground is pretty moist from having just been uh, flood irrigated. Not seeing really any, if we pull away some of the uh, residue, still not seeing uh, any earthworm holes uh, evident on the soil surface. But remember to clear all the residue starting from the outside working in um, so that you chase any critters in. But the uh, earthworm holes, there's one. Um, there's two. As you can see, it's much easier to do this test when your crop is fairly new versus the alfalfa field where it was very difficult to get in there and look around at it. Ah, there's three. So we have three earthworm holes that we've discovered in here and three insect species. But what we'll see with uh, as we do the, the 25 foot tape measures, you've got a lot of grasses in between here. So the ground cover here is actually better than the alfalfa field uh, overall. Okay, so we were just doing the aggregate uh, swirling. We did a minute waiting and then we've been swirling steadily for uh, a minute now as we check to see if that one aggregate in there I'm going to fish it out because after a minute or two minutes and then I'm going to actually gonna get a little bit more and I'm going to swirl a little more vigorously now so we're moving into a vigorous swirl whereas before we had a slow swirl let's see it looks like that aggregate is holding together assuming it is an aggregate so that's the next thing is is it an aggregate or is it a pebble? So we're going to pour out the water and see if that aggregate is an aggregate or a pebble. So we're going to bring it down. It looks like it's an aggregate because it's getting smaller and smaller. So we reach in there and yes, I smushed it. It is soil. So it's got, it's a four. It's done really well. It's held together as an aggregate. So we're going to go over here to the tape measure and right here we've got a plant 
a live plant, one. We've got a live plant here, that's a two. This one is a live plant, is three. Right here is a uh, residue, so that's cover two. So that's four. And here we have uh, five. So in this field, if we go off of these five hits, we have 100% ground cover. Uh, considerably better than the 60% ground cover that we had in the alfalfa field. Also, when I did uh, dug a shovel full, the shovel went in far more easily in this field than it did in the other field. So this is an example of the modern you can do in a crop field with, as we've shown with the alfalfa and rye. And what we have uh, here is a demonstration. Three, normally you'd be doing three spots per field. So what we discovered is that the rye field is actually, while the productivity might not look the same, the soil conditions are actually healthier on that rye field. And this is actually a clay surface that they're reclaiming with this rye. Um, so between the cover crop and the rye that they've been seeding, uh, they're making uh, more improvements on this field.